Hello, everybody, BQ, Impact Lounge. You see a new style of thumbnail in front of you. I'm trying to work on some of the branding with the Impact Lounge. So if you see this green style of thumbnail in front of you, you're going to get some kind of mini podcast with me. So something in audio format. Um, but it's not going to be a, a 20 minute podcast or anything like that, 20 minute or longer. Just these mini podcasts. So if you see these green thumbnails, no pun intended, uh, that's what we're doing here at the channel. Um, if you see a blue one, that's usually something of Lewis's. If you see a red one, it's probably some kind of video content for myself. Yellow is the B-Side podcast. And then the Cool Factor has a pretty pretty obvious uh, style thumbnail that I use for that. So I want to talk Chelsea Green today. I did an upload not too long ago talking about her return to Impact and talking about her departure from TNA initially. And a conversation that I had with her. Now, it's, this is probably not a conversation she remembers. I can guarantee you she doesn't remember it. But it was a conversation I had with her many years ago. And, you know, I told her as a fan of the company that I appreciated that she was promoting her matches and promoting the company all the way out the door until the day she left the company. You know, she requested her release. She was a knockout champion. A lot of people didn't care for that. But she promoted and she gave 100%. That's one thing you can see about Chelsea Green is that she gives 100%. There's no, you can't deny that at all. So I kind of talked about people almost, you know, pleading with them a little, hey, we got to give her a chance because if you listen to previous interviews that she used to do when she was with TNA, and I, I listened to a lot of them, 75% of them were her talking about Tough Enough, about NXT, the WWE product. It's always been clear that's where she wanted to go. That was the goal for her. And sometimes we... We hear that someone looked at TNA or Impact as a stepping stone, and and as fans, we get very offended by that. Now, we want a certain amount of people to, to want to be there and to want to stay there, because you kind of need that. But there's also going to be a lot of wrestlers that say, hey, this is the next step. This isn't the, the end for me. You know, they want to take it to that next level. It was always clear that she wanted to be there and she wanted to challenge herself and and be part of that company. But when she was with the company, she gave it 100% in everything that she did. She's not, from what I'm understanding, if you're reading the, the wrestling websites and everything, I'm understanding she's not part of the company right now. I mean, she's a, she is an impact knockout, but I don't believe she is signed, which big shocker, right? When she negotiated between Impact and Ring of Honor, you know, she let both companies know, I want to do both products. So I think she was supposed to be part of the Ring of Honor Women's Tournament, but she had to pull out due to injury. She was able to get cleared by the Health Commission in, in Tennessee so she could wrestle Slammiversary. But I think in Baltimore, I think where they're doing Ring of Honor, she was not able to be cleared to wrestle. Um, so with all this being said, there's nothing wrong with this, what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of you guys may have come across this information already. So, she had recently done a podcast interview, uh, and, and the uh, called the "Those Wrestling Girls" podcast. And she had said she she basically made it pretty clear that she will go back to WWE in a heartbeat. And she talked about being jealous of Alexa Bliss's character because she wanted to do stuff like that. You know, it fits what we have seen from her in, in the TNA of past. It fits, right? And then Mike Bennett had said that she was supposed to be uh, Sister Abigail at one point, which she, I'm sure she would have enjoyed quite a bit, and it probably would have been better than what they ultimately did with the S Sister Abigail character, which was just Bray Wyatt. So they asked her, well, they asked her many things, but she, she said she'd be open to any role with that with that um, group of Alexa Bliss Bray Wyatt so she says quote honestly if they called me and said do you want to be Lily which is the uh, the doll of Alexa Bliss I would in a heartbeat admitted green because that is totally the type of character that I feel like we need to see and I want to be that person green said that the hot mess character would have been a perfect fit for Alexa Bliss and the fiend she said, trust me, I've tried for so long, and I also thought it was just The Fiend and Alexa Bliss before Lily. They could have had a third person because Alexa wasn't really wrestling at the time. She was kind of just going along with The Fiend. So I thought 
if they had kind of like a woman they could puppeteer, that could be me. And I could still wrestle in the women's division and we could impact both the males and females. So that is a great idea, you know, to uh, that they could puppeteer her. She probably would have had a lot of fun doing that. And the wrestling audience, the WWE audience probably would have liked that. But, but I think it's clear with her that there's still unfinished business within WWE because she didn't get an opportunity to do everything she wanted to do. She didn't get an opportunity to do anything. I think she maybe wrestled once on TV. I, I think I, rem- I didn't watch it. I mean, I don't ever watch what they do, but I, I think I remember that she was... Um, that might have been against Charlotte, but I think she was some kind of mystery opponent or surprise opponent or something like that, and then she got hurt. So there's nothing wrong with this. I want to put it out there. I'm still happy to see her in the company. I think the the knockouts division is missing someone like her. But here's the point I want to make. I think, I truly do think that the company has to be careful with who they put the titles on going forward. I think it's been an issue for a little while. Don't get me wrong. But they're very much the type of company that's like, hey, we get a shiny new object. Uh, we're going to put the belt on him. That that happens quite a bit. It's I mean, we all know Taylor Wilde's going to get the title at some point, right? And she's not necessarily new. She's part of the, the history. But we know she's going to get a title run. Like, it's it's clear when you watch the product, at some point she's, she's going to get it. And I kind of feel that way with Chelsea, too. But I think you got to be careful because when someone is openly campaigning, not campaigning, but just openly saying, yeah, I would go back. You, you got to be careful putting titles on people like that. Now, Chelsea's probably the exception because she could, like, not be under contract and she'd probably give 200% to her, to her title run. All right? I just, I'm trying to put that out there so this is not coming off as something negative towards her because it's not. It's more just saying the impact, like, just because you got a hot, shiny character, don't don't just put the title on them. Don't find a way to get the title on them, you know? Some of these wrestlers you've had for a while, like you've got Kiera Hogan. She's gone. I, I don't know if it was on her own accord. I'm going to assume it was because a fi- fire and flavor was not something you just break up out of nowhere. I'm going to assume she knows what her next step is. But maybe if she was taken serious as a, as a singles competitor or had a knockouts title, maybe not a title run, but a title program, then maybe maybe she'd still be here. But you have some of these stars who are here for a year, two years, and they just kind of continue to take the back seat to the the uh, the shiny new talent coming in that came from WWE or whatever. So when I see Chelsea, I feel like they're going to put the title on her at some point. You know, she's a baby face, so and she's friends with uh, Deanna Perrazzo, I believe. So I just feel like okay, they're going to fight eventually. It, it, it's very very clear. But she's a part-timer. She's Brock Lesnar. You know, she just wrestles more. A lot more. (laughs) But she's a part-timer. You can't put the belts on part-timers because they may not wave the flag for you that the way someone who's like really signed at the company will. Uh, You see that with the Good Brothers. They're signed at the company, but they have so much freedom to, to do other things. Like they're not, they do a decent job. Don't get me wrong. But they're, they're not the flag bearers we really want to see for impact. Because they're not like 100% dedicated to the company. And this is a problem I truly think we're going to say. Maybe, maybe it's not a problem, but it's the situation going forward that I truly think is going to be the case. If you're signing wrestlers off the indies, you can probably get them to sign for a year, two years, three years. You know, you know what I mean? Like Sam Beal's probably signed for a couple years. But when you're getting these WWE releases, I think more often than not, they're going to be these short-term contracts. You know, like W. Morrissey says, he signed through Bound for Glory. We'll see what happens after that. But it's going to be a lot of short-term contracts because I think they're really going to people and say, hey, come here and give it a shot. See, See if you like it. Which makes sense. But then, like, us as fans, we're just like, how do we get invested in these guys that could easily leave because the company's openly telling them, well, just just come here for a little bit to see if you like it. I mean, they did it with Deanna, and thank God she is here long term. But who knows? Chelsea could be gone again in a year. Like, WWE is actually signing people back that they released, whether it be on screen, off screen, whatever. They're bringing people back. 
So that's probably a lot of the reasons she's not going to sign with anyone. And it's probably the reason some of these people they bring in aren't going to sign. So if you look at the Drama King coming on board, Aiden English, uh, he's already doing commentary for some other company. I don't remember what it is. So to go back to what I said, what I truly think is going to happen is that every time outside from an indie star, if they're bringing in these former WWE talents, they're going to say, you are free to do anything you want. Just please be on our television program. But you're, you know, they're, they're building relationships with more companies seeming like seemingly every month, just a matter of time till they, you know, the ring of honor gets in on this. But they're going to tell people, hey, you know, come wrestle for us, but you can wrestle in other places. Like, we're not going to get that exclusive talent unless they're coming straight off the indies. They're they're going to have so much freedom to do other projects that they're not, they're just, it's just natural. They're not going to be like fully invested in Impact. And these are the guys and the girls that Impact's going to want to put the titles on. So we're going to have an issue there. I don't think you'd have that issue with Chelsea Green. Because, again, she'll give it 100%, 200%. But if you're just like, okay, this Buddy Murphy dude's coming in. Let's say we're they're signing him. We, we know, I think as fans, we just know he's just not going to have an exclusive contract, right? He's, they're not going to be like, hey, Buddy Murphy is signed for three years. Like We, we just know that that's not going to be the case. It's probably going to be very similar to W. Morrissey's. It's going to be. It's going to give him, you know, the opportunity to leave if he needs to, because WWE's calling him back. Uh, they're going to give the opportunities. Hey, you know, if there's an AEW opportunity, if there's an NWA opportunity, if there's a New Japan opportunity. You can do all this stuff. So that's who they got to be careful putting the titles on. I'm going to wrap it up here. I wanted to uh, stop at about 10 minutes. We're hitting 12, so. Uh, That's what I got for you guys. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm out. Peace.